charms and twines. <laughs> shabby hotel room. Is that what you want me to do? Certainly not. Well, it was just a thought. <laughs> Time out! Time out! Time out! Good! You see, Rudy, That's well time you out. see, all he thinks about is his football. That's his whole life. Football. Take a hand the Time out. You're coming away with me. Oh, it's no use, Rudy. I just can't leave him. We're a husband and wife. He's my man, and I'm his woman. We're going. I'll get my bag. Quinn! <laughs> Don't do it! What? Don't do what? Don't cross the affront of the set! <laughs> Just pack a few things, my darling. A few things? Yes, we can send for the rest. We can send for the rest. That's what I said. I'm ready. Oh, Rudy, Rudy, how I've secretly, secretly hungered for this moment. And I, my darling, I too. Cross and white. Don't trip. Go for a first down. We'll never kick on a false down. I'm not expecting a I pass. kidding. He never kicks. Go for a pass. Go for a pass. That's hey. the bad part. Go for a pass. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in our society today, sometimes truly a great man does not really receive the recognition he deserves. And I know of such a man. As a matter of fact, a man who has dedicated his life to helping others and truly giving of himself. <clears throat> Pardon me. A man, in short, who has done more good in his lifetime than anyone I know. And I think it only fitting and proper that he have at least this one moment of recognition before the entire nation. He is in our audience tonight, and I'd like to have him stand up and take a bow. If you will, please. And needless to say, uh, chemo savvy and all that jazz. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my, my next, Gino Pizzas, my next guest <clears throat> isn't really just a guest. Uh, what I mean to say is he isn't a guest that is often seen on many of the variety shows. And this is a man who usually isn't available for television appearances. The only reason that he is available for my show is because he is in between concert dates. Rather than lay off, he figured he'd pick up the small fortune I'm paying him for uh, doing a couple of his cute tunes. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. James Brown. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, hi, James. Huh. Mr. Brown, hi. <clears throat> mm. Hi, James Brown, sir. <laughs> what is this yes about? A small fortune, a couple of cute tunes. What is that? Uh -huh. Oh, I, I, I probably meant a, a cute fortune and doing a couple of small tunes uh, uh, is probably what I meant. <laughs> That's not what you meant. No, you're right. I never meant that at all. Now, uh, just tell me what I meant and I'll mean it. <laughs> Jerry. What you probably meant was... Yeah, lay it on me, baby. James Brown, Mr. Man, sir, whatever you What you probably meant was... Yeah. Now, yeah, he is. Right, now here it is. A single with soul. Such soul, you could lick your fingers from it. A fine art. I have all his paintings. It's my pleasure. I'm ecstatic and thrilled and choked also. Two percent of you at this time. To let you have them. 
Mr. James Brown. I knew it all the time. What are you getting uptight for? <laughs> Settle down. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we really have a special treat for you. Back in the 1920s, uh, an awful lot of you people are going to remember this, and some of you are, are not. But back in the 1920s, uh, there was a marvelous young girl who danced her way into America's heart. Uh, she starred in such films as uh, Broadway Melody and uh, Bermuda Holiday. Tonight, 42 years later, she's as spry, as nimble, and as light-footed as ever. And ladies and gentlemen, I would appreciate you joining me in saying hello to the lovely and talented Miss Mitzi Coleman, ladies and gentlemen. What a thrill it is to have you here with us tonight, Mitzi. Make it quick, Jimmy. I, I gotta get back to the home. Uh, well, well I, I'm sure you all remember uh, Mitzi, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dancing down the steps with George Murphy and the Berkeleys of Broadway. Uh, Mitzi, wake up, dear. I'm talking. Uh, Mitzi. Mitzi. Sweetheart. Honey. Are we there yet? Are uh, we there yet? M Mitzi was uh, actually... Uh, Mitzi... Wonderful. She's always been affectionate. What Mitzi, a pretty what, boy. What, thank, is, what were you saying, you. darling? Uh, Mitzi, I just want to know, for the, for the audience's benefit, what, what, what was your greatest moment in films? Oh! <laughs> that was when Douglas Fairbanks just tore off all my clothes and made love to me in a shower. It was so hot. It was uh, yeah, hot. But, but, but Mitzi... Mitzi, darling, you never made a movie with Douglas Fairbanks. I know. <laughs> hey, Sonny, yeah. Sonny, twirl me around. Take my hand and just twirl me around. You know, I used to just love it when Warren, Warren Williams and just spin me out and spin me back. Go yeah. ahead, honey. I'm, I'm all wound up. Let's twirl. Let's have at it. Go. Give me a shot. Give all right. Here right. you go, baby. Right. Here we are. How's that, Mitzi? Here. You know, it's a... Mitzi? Hold on. Mitzi, would you wake up for a second? Yeah. Uh, Mitzi... Oh, film... hello, Jimmy. Hi. Uh, Mitzi, films seem to be getting racier today. I mean... Oh, films are getting racier yes. today. Did you know that? <laughs> yes, what were you saying? Well, in comparison, the movies of the 20s seem very innocent. Oh, uh, we used to make pretty racy pictures, too, you know, but, but the censors cut out the best parts. All the sex wound up on the cutting room floor. I see. <laughs> it was awfully uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, well, Mitzi, yes. I, I remember in one movie, you danced, if I recall, on the wing of an airplane. Oh, Johnny, I danced on everything. The things I danced on, you just wouldn't believe. You know, I've danced on pianos and on typewriters. <laughs> Say, do you remember Lionel Barrymore? Oh, yes, of course. Well, I danced on him, too. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Toad, yeah. Jimmy Toad. That's one. Jimmy, Jimmy Toad. Yeah, good. Oh, but Wonderful. Jimmy, you should have seen the step, the time step that I did on Bob Burns' bazooka. Yeah, you know, I'm sure. Yeah, Jimmy, and Jimmy, then Jimmy, again with the tongue, tongue, tongue. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Let's see. Uh, sweetheart, that, that's hey, great. Jackie, you want to know something interesting? Yeah, what? My legs are insured for one million dollars. Think of that. What a thrill. Yeah. What a thrill, honey. Yeah. Well, I got you, Mitzi. Don't worry about it. I want you to just take a look at that. Bend over. Bend over and take a look at that. Aren't they pretty? Do you know something? I was paid off twice. Uh, let, let me explain. Uh, you see... I never forget the time that they put my feet in cement. Roman's they Chinese stopped. Theater? No, no. The Mafia came by. Oh, oh yeah. No, we darling, what I wanted to know, are you, are you working now, Mitzi? I mean, making any films? Oh, I can't get arrested in this town. Hollywood's changed, Jimmy. It's really changed. They used to hire a star on her merit, her talent. You just don't know what 
we go through with the studio. I understand. But nobody touches my body, ever. Oh, well, well, of nobody, course. Nobody, of course, except my husband. Yes. Next week, I'm marrying a 20-year-old actor. Oh, he's a beautiful boy. He's just got muscles that grow on top Mitzi. of muscles. He's almost Mitzi. as pretty as you are. Yeah, you are like... Mitzi, you're going to marry a 20-year-old actor? That, that could be fatal. Well, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> no, no. Well, that, that's, that's true, I suppose. Wait, sweetheart. Hey, Johnny. Johnny. Yeah. I'm getting ready and I'm getting hot. I'm ready for yeah. the big production number. Well. I think as long as I'm moving, we ought to get going because i got to get back to the home, you yeah. know. Yeah, well, uh, Mitzi, look, all right, fine. Ladies and gentlemen, you, but you will Hurry be careful. Up, yeah. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mitzi Coleman will dance her famous number from Flying Down to Rio. That's it. Go. She's asleep again, folks. Mitzi, I tell you what, why don't we go and rest, sweetheart? And you, you, uh, I'm sorry. And now, the star of our show, Mr. Jerry Lewis. <laughs> The blues I'll lay low, I'll make them stay low, they'll never trail over my head, I'll be a devil till I'm an angel, but until then, I'm gonna live till I die. Jerry, we don't want you falling anymore. Now, don't do that. We don't want you to hurt yourself. Yeah, well, well, it, it, was, it, was, it was just a... Naughty, naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty, naughty. You go naughty, naughty, naughty. Would you hold that a second? Naughty, naughty.
Matt Doherty, no good. Uh, you know, whenever I work in... There's something... <clears throat> there's something wrong there. Uh, Billy Foster, would you do me a favor and turn off those lights? <clears throat> yeah, okay, good. Now, <clears throat> do me another favor. Will you put on one letter at a time? <laughs> oh, I was wrong, that's right. Okay. <clears throat> You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I must tell you this because I think that television has uh, developed in the last few years to such a degree that people are very interested in the things that happen to those of us that are involved in the medium for no other reason other than the fact that uh, real things happen. You know, you, when you see a show, you see people performing and you see us do things that are more or less prepared to some degree or another. <clears throat> Pardon me, but... The real things that happen are terribly interesting to people. I'll back up again. Could I have uh, the stool, please? I'd appreciate it very much. Uh, this young lady's been with me since the beginning of the show, Bruce Cabot, and thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I wonder what you might hold on this Yo, hold on, Mr. She's with the rabbinical college, so you don't fool around. And uh, I get letters, you know, letters from people. And I get letters from kids. Now, the most marvelous thing about kids is that they say what they think, and they write what they think. They're no different when they put their little hand to the paper. And uh, for a long time, I wondered why kids never wrote to me and said, Dear Jerry, which they don't do. They uh, also never write, Dear Mr. Lewis. And then through examination and meeting kids, I found that they find that they're more comfortable in that they don't say Jerry because that's disrespectful because they're so young. They don't say Mr. Lewis because that's too formal and it's uncomfortable. So what they say is, dear Jerry Lewis. That's how they write their letters. So I compiled a bunch of the letters. I want you to hear, these are real letters that children sent me. And, they, and, and the only letters that I chose, which is the truth, are the ones that start with dear Jerry Lewis. Because a kid that says dear Jerry is a fresh kid, you know. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, my name is Jerry too, and I can't do anything you do. Does my last name have to match also? Love, Jerry Horowitz. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, if I have dinner at your house, then will you have dinner at mine? So if you don't invite me, then you'll never come over here. I love you, your best friend. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, if you're so rich, why don't you give it to the poor and you'll be famous like Robin Hood? <laughs> Sincerely yours, a friend, about seven. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, which one are you, Rowan or Martin? <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, whenever I watch you on television, my mother won't let me, your pal, Harrison. I like that one. The mother's dumb. Dear Jerry Lewis, I saw you once in a movie, but you didn't see me. Love, Eddie. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, do your children laugh at you, and do you get mad? But I know you won't hit them because they know you personally. Phyllis gets. That's cute. Dear Jerry Lewis, are you going to be elected sometime? You would be a nice cop, Elliot. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, do you know Elvis Presley? If you don't, then we're in the same boat. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, you are my favorite fan. Send me something. <laughs> it's signed Phyllis with no address. <laughs> Dear Jerry Lewis, I'm 13 years old and I'm a comedian also. I'd like to be on your show. If it's okay, let me know right away because it'll take me a week to train a kid to take over my paper route. <laughs> they're real, they're real. <laughs> Not marvelous. I think the reason that those things are so warm and, and, uh, and you have such a feeling of, uh, of fun with them because they're so real and uh, you can't fool with that. Uh, girls, uh, Bruce and Bernie, would you bring me uh, the, uh, yeah, and take this for me, please, because I'm really anxious to do this, because you're such a nice audience, I figured that we could have fun with it. Thank you. Would you take, 
Uh, yes, thank you. No, well, you have to hold it. I'll use this. No, I need that. You take that. Thank you. 